Why get all your holiday decorations delivered through Instacart? Because maybe you only bought two wreaths, but you have 12 windows. Or maybe your toddler got very eager with the advent calendar. Or maybe the inflatable snowman didn't make it through the snowstorm. Or maybe the twinkle lights aren't twinkling. Whatever the reason, this season, Instacart's here for hosts and their whole holiday haul. Get decorations from The Home Depot, CVS, and more through Instacart and enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. The holidays are all about sharing with family. Meals, couches, stories, grandma's secret pecan pie recipe. And now you can also share a cart with Instacart's family carts. Everyone can add what they want to one group cart from wherever they are. So you don't have to go from room to room to find out who wants cranberry sauce or who should get mini marshmallows for the yams or collecting votes for sugar cookies versus shortbread. Just share a cart and then share the meals and the moments. Download the Instacart app and get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes. Plus, enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. This is Vanessa Marshall, Harrison Dula from Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hello, friends, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. I'm your host, Dan Zare, delighted to talk Star Wars with you. Since May 2013, I've been committed to creating a positive, family-friendly, spoiler-free place for our Star Wars community. Imagine walking into your favorite coffee shop and joining a lively discussion about Star Wars films, Disney Plus live action, animation, books, comics, collectibles, or Star Wars experiences at the Disney theme parks. I want to bring that sense of community to this podcast, my website, special events, live video experiences, email newsletter, and more. Join our Star Wars community at coffeewithkenobi.com and be part of something special. Thank you to the official travel partner of Coffee with Kenobi, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Check out coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel for a no cost, no obligation quote and let them know Coffee with Kenobi and Dan Zare sent you. If you want to join us on the Disney Wish June 16th to the 20th, 2025, go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash DisneyWish. If you're no cost, no obligation quote, it's going to be an amazing experience. We'd love to have you join us. On today's show, John Redling Schaefer of the Hyperion Hub is back to talk about his first time seeing The Empire Strikes Back. And he just saw it, you know, a few weeks ago, and he is an adult with kids. And he's never seen it, so he's got fresh eyes. What a lucky guy he is. I can't wait to share this conversation with you. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and have some coffee with Kenobi. Joining us today for a cup of coffee, well, any any cup of his choosing, uh, he is a returning guest. As I mentioned, he has set the internet ablaze, friends, because... This gentleman, Mr. John Redling Schaefer of the Hyperion Hub. First of all, John, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Dan. Of course. I, John, you and I were talking. We, I had you on July 27th, 2023. It was show 669 entitled Star Wars for the first time. You saw you're an adult. You have a family. You know, uh, what do you have? Three children? Four children? Four. Four kids. Four yep. children. Uh, a lifelong Disney fan. Those who listen to the Hyperion Hub know um, what magic John Redding Schaefer, John Alois, and John Degenhardt have when they talk about all things Disney. I can just hear John Alois' his voice, the cacophonous voice of John talking. But they're always giving you a hard time about uh, your uh, the hole in your Disney resume would be Star Wars. Is that fair to say? I think Star Wars is paramount. I do take a little grief on the Marvel side, but hey, one step at a time. One step at a time. So for the for for people who maybe uh, need a refresher or, or didn't listen to Coffee with Kenobi Show six sixty nine, um, remind uh, everyone, or maybe for the first time, of what uh, was the delay in your uh, galactic um, genesis. The delay is, I think, based on a yeah a myriad of events. Number one, I wasn't born when the very first one came out, right? And I was about a year and a half to four when we have episodes five and six joining us. Life happens. I get pulled into different directions. Even as a kid, I just never found an interest in what Star Wars had to offer. Fast forward. 
you get into grade school, you get into high school, you hear people, you know, even as a kid, you hear people talking about it. I knew kind of who these characters were. I'd heard of them, but life, well, in this instance, 40 some years comes and goes. And I realize, wow, there's a lot of people around the world, not just Americans, who really enjoy and have a love for this, I'll say, culture, right? Not sure. just a movie, but an absolute culture, a zeitgeist, a, a, a way of life. And so, obviously, you went to the movies. You you went and saw the Disney films. Uh, did you see Tron? I have seen Tron, but not when it came out. What I don't know what year it was. I would have been pretty young. Um, I would guess, gosh, 81, 82, 83. Yeah. So I was born in 79. My very first movie was E.T. So I had a little oh. taste of the space living, but that was yes. my very first movie. Yep. I love that you said a little taste of the space living. That's what a what a wonderful way to explain that. So so you're so it's not that like you're opposed to the to the genre of of science fantasy or science fiction or things like that. It's just for whatever reason, it just wasn't your bag, which, by the way, nothing wrong with that at all. Well, I, I appreciate that, and and to be fair, uh, I I think I mentioned that this on a prior episode on the prior episode uh, that Star Trek was the theme in our house. You know, uh, mm -hmm. my mother grew up in the '60s, and that you know, came, well, was in college in the '60s when Star Trek came out, and that's what I did watch uh, with with my family at times. And yes, science fiction in the right if I'm in the right mindset, I can appreciate the Avatar movies. We absolutely love them. It's, hmm. it's one of those uh, where if it comes on, well, just like Shawshank Redemption or other ones, I'm going to sit and no matter where it is, when I find it, I'm just going to watch the whole thing. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we're, we're talking about good stories, right? A story well told. We can captivate you regardless of the genre. So you eventually, you watch Star Wars. It was a rainy day. Um, it just happened to work out. The stars aligned, so to speak. You watched it. Uh, you enjoyed it, fair to say. I mean, I don't know that you necessarily went out and got an R2-D2 tattoo, at least as far as I know. Well, I'm not going to disclose that one way or the other, but yeah, I, I did. I, I, I enjoyed it, and I uh, there was a reason why you know I decided to kind of keep moving forward on the path. Good, good deal. So, so, the, so that leads us to what for many people have said is uh, their favorite of our generation. It's it's considered the best Star Wars movie. For most of my life, I've said The Empire Strikes Back was my favorite film. I've recently kind of softened that and changed it to the original just because that's what started this whole thing going for me and for so many of us. But The Empire Strikes Back is a very, very different film than the original Star Wars. Before we get to that nuance, what was the impetus for deciding I'm going to start this one up? Uh, it wasn't guilt, despite what the guys over at the Hyperion, Hyperion, Hyperion Hub would tell you, but I will say that... I had a, another free afternoon. We don't get many, and that's a good that's a good problem. That's a blessing to have. But I thought, you know what? It's been shockingly almost a year and a half since I saw the first one, and it's it's crazy. I just uh, happened to be flipping through the DVR and saw it was still saved, and I went, well, it's noon. Everybody's settled in doing either homework or other stuff, and uh, for once I have some downtime. Sure enough, I hit play, and off she went. Off she went. Um, from the moment it started, what are kind of some of the some of your initial thoughts? You see the original crawl, kind of giving the context of what's going on. What was kind of going through your mind as as it started? And you see, you're on instead of a, a desert, warm planet. Uh, now you're suddenly in the opposite. You're in the frozen tundra of the planet of Hoth. Well, first off, I now know what that is. That that was, uh, uh, you know, you see the Starbucks mugs at the, at the Disney parks. Hoth, what's that? Or I see a shirt. <laughs> it's amazing what you can learn by actually watching the movies, isn't it? And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this. The title tips me off right away. I have to imagine in my mind, again, I let me first thank you for being patient and understanding. I am by far the least knowledgeable guest of Star Wars that you have on this show. I'm guessing by a mile, mile and a half, maybe a marathon distance. Um, but as I sit there as, you know, uh, a very amateur uh, movie watcher goer of, of this genre, I just sat back and went, OK, well, 
the Empire has to be angry after the first one, right? Uh, you don't blow up something important to somebody and not become a big, a bigger target than you were. So I had a feeling that as I'm trying to understand and read through the crawl, I'm going, okay, the history buff in me is saying, so are they're going even further underground. This is the, you know, La Resistance in, in Vichy, France. We're, we're going deep. We got to hide because they're coming and they're going to come find us. And it's not going to be pretty when they do find us. And when they bring their pretty impressive mechanical uh, toys, uh, I'll say uh, lovingly, uh, to the surface of, a, of an ice covered planet, uh, it's on. Let's put it that way. I love that. Uh, and I will say, um, while you, we lovingly joke that you may be the least knowledgeable, I, I can't imagine there is a Star Wars fan listening to this right now that is an insanely jealous and envious that you are getting to experience this film for the first time through fresh eyes. You you are just talk. You are yet again, our diamond in the rough to throw another Disney, right? I mean, it's really, truly, John, it is magical just hearing you talk about it. Why get all your holiday decorations delivered through Instacart? Because maybe you only bought two wreaths, but you have 12 windows. Or maybe your toddler got very eager with the advent calendar. Or maybe the inflatable snowman didn't make it through the snowstorm. Or maybe the twinkle lights aren't twinkling. Whatever the reason, this season, Instacart's here for hosts and their whole holiday haul. Get decorations from the Home Depot, CVS, and more through Instacart and enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. The holidays are all about sharing with family. Meals, couches, stories, grandma's secret pecan pie recipe. And now you can also share a cart with Instacart's family carts. Everyone can add what they want to one group cart from wherever they are. So you don't have to go from room to room to find out who wants cranberry sauce or who should get many marshmallows for the yams or collecting votes for sugar cookies versus shortbread. Just share a cart and then share the meals and the moments. Download the Instacart app and get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes. Plus, enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. Um, it's, it's really spectacular. So you, we mentioned Hoth, uh, right away. Uh, we learn in the crawl that Darth Vader is obsessed with finding the young Skywalker. Of course, even if you hadn't seen the films, you know about the, the family lineage there, but were there certain expectations you had about that sort of angle? The expectations were mixed, uh, to be perfectly honest. I knew that the search was on. I knew that there was going to be a big focus on Luke in a way that I didn't fully appreciate. And what I later learned, obviously, is that you have the forces of good and evil both trying to win him over more so than uh, than I, I think I fully appreciate it. I just always assumed he was going to be the good guy. And, and, and you know, I'll say there's still obviously some pieces that I don't fully appreciate but yeah, the, the fact that we knew Darth was going to was was on a mission, a, a kind of a subplot, so to speak. Yeah, we have to get the resistance. But at the same time, I got to find him and watching it turn into maybe we can win him over was kind of a, a part I didn't appreciate or understand at first. And then I went, well, of course, I mean, modern warfare ter- tells you that if you can win someone over without the need to fight any longer, that's mm-hmm. better for that side. Exactly. Exactly. And I love that. See, this is, this is just gold. This is gold. Keep it, <laughs> keep it coming, buddy. Keep it coming. Um, I'm just sitting here like lapping up this blue milk. It's fabulous. Oh, um, so one of the things that I think is um, so many of us love about this movie is Harrison Ford truly gets to shine more in this film than any of the other star Wars films. He's very much a focal point. The writer of this film, Lawrence Kazan, also wrote Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, you know, he he's given Ford some of the best, his best dialogue in his career. But you see initially that um, the uh, the sort of the playful tension uh, of sort of a, a very, a very loosely based love triangle hits very much a different level here. Uh, and it's been said often that the two of them, Solo, Han Solo, Harrison Ford and Princess Leia are going to play by Carrie Fisher naturally. Uh, it's almost like the um, the Lauren Bacall, Humphrey Bogart, uh, kind of uh, the banter of the Hollywood uh, legends of the 40s and 50s. Did you catch some of that vibe from them? I actually caught some of it in the first one. You know, yeah. there were there there were, uh, you know, 
being at least astute enough to kind of sit there and, and knowing a little bit about the backstory, uh, just enough to maybe be dangerous, I thought, well, this is going to culminate at some point, I assume. And so I got through the first one. Okay, there's a little bit of a tension. But yes, the, the, the capital T on tension hits uh, here in the second one. And, you know, I, I think the the interaction, and, and I know people have told me that some of these lines were ad-libbed, which, which is phenomenal, but it truly becomes, I think, a love story by the end of, 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 of this one. You know, when when we all now, I can say we all, because uh, pretty much no one else is ever is in my position. Uh, we know what happens uh, to Mr. Solo at the end here, and you see nothing but love uh, play out. And we, I would be remiss if we don't mention the music and the under, you know, the undercurrent mm. of of everything in that scene uh, when he well basically says his goodbye, and it it is it, it's the culmination of what I thought was clearly something coming after the first movie. The um, yeah, John Williams. Uh, this is where we get the Imperial March, which is, of course, one of the most iconic uh, songs, tracks uh, in the history of music. Uh, I don't know. I don't even think that's hyperbolic. I think I mean, you can't go to a college sporting event or anything like that and not hear some sort of version of it, of John yep. Williams' score. Uh, Darth Vader is, uh, I think, fair to say, a main character in this film. And while he's clearly the bad guy. Um, there's, there's a little bit more nuance to him. What, what stood out to you about Darth Vader in this movie? Well, other than seeing him get his helmet put on from the, the back, uh, which kind of, that, that was, that was interesting. I mean, obviously there has to be someone under there. I watched him almost become infatuated with stuff outside. And, and I mentioned this earlier, stuff outside the resistance, his focus became Luke. There's clearly a connection, spoiler alert. And, uh, you know, I'll say this, the very, as we get close to the end, if not really, in essence, the very end, oh, well, now I can appreciate why he's infatuated with Luke and at the same time trying to almost save him in the way he feels best, which is to join forces with him. And he's also much more aggressive and violent um, did any of his, his behavior surprise you in this one? Uh, yes. Uh, knowing what the line, I mean, I already knew the, the, the iconic line at the end. I didn't know it was going to be in this movie. I'll be honest, but I knew who he was in relation. Uh, but yes, there was clearly no stopping him. And that is something that was interesting to me that not only was it against the resistance, but against his own team as you know, you have the empire. He was quick to make sure that if someone's, uh, thoughts or theories or strategies impacted uh, the situation wrongly. Yeah. You see a hint of that with the first movie didn't matter whose side you were on. And if you were considered in his way or causing problems, you were out of the picture quickly. I think the action in this movie really ramps up uh, and that's just my mm -hmm. own assessment, but clearly the action ramps up the violence. I'm not saying that in a detrimental way, but the violence I think ramps up even more. Well, for sure. I mean, he he murders several of his men for frustrating him or failing him. And yeah. and that that always stood out, I think, to to all of us. Well, and, and I say this again, you know, not trying to focus too much on the military science of it, but that is a very interesting characteristic of those who lose sight of the overall goal. And I think what I'm seeing is almost desperation, especially with how he, you know, how the movie ends, especially with what happens to Han Solo and how it was going to be this one tangential part of all of this, you know, getting to Luke and, and, and trying to get through to him, regardless of what it meant for the empire. So there's, a, we talked a lot about the, the villain, of course, Vader. I mean, he's the big, image on the poster he's what everyone talks about uh but there's another character that um uh, is for introduced in the first for the first time uh he's 900 years old he's small diminutive um it's of course grandmaster yoda tell me tell me what you think about yoda of course you everyone knows who yoda is you've been down the aisle of of walmart several times in your life you know yoda stuff everywhere but tell me your impressions of Yoda seeing him uh, in all of his splendor. 
Well, the first time I saw him, it, it was. It was, okay. I wondered where he was in the first one. And I, and I thought, well, at some point I'm going to see him. And I just I just stopped. You know, I, I, I kind of took it all in to, I mean, the, the cinematography is perfect. You know, mm-hmm. to introduce an iconic character, my goodness. Now, I mean, now appreciating how iconic he is. I mean, back then I'm sure, oh, well, this is neat. It, it, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect in the introduction. I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but I'm almost um, intrigued with his personality. You know, I, yeah. it took me a minute to make sure I was understanding exactly what he was saying. Yes, I mean, the translation doesn't work for me right away, but I, I get it. Um, but his his attitude, you know, although as I think about it a little bit more, you're that old. Yeah, I'm not going to be as patient with people. I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you can't figure out, and there was a line that stuck out to me, well, we've got someone else who can do it. So um, he, he's pretty matter of fact. And at the same time, it he is he it was what i it's what i thought he would be uh, and 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 appreciate what he could be and and even more well frank oz of course as the voice of yoda the performance um it was quite elaborate um the the water you know it was all there they had real snakes in this thing to create atmosphere a lot of the crew were constantly getting bitten mark hamill was bitten um it, it was dirty it was nasty it was a pretty rough shoot I think it showcases how brilliant of an actor Mark Hamill actually is to interact with this puppet when there's no context because they're creating this legend as they are filming. Were you surprised by Yoda, uh, Yoda's ruse at first when he was being silly? Were you confused that he was so comical at first until he kind of dialed in and revealed who he actually was? Yes, is the short answer. The long answer is I, it was quickly replaced with he realizes the seriousness of the situation. But I, I, again, I, I, I maybe wrongly just attributed this to an old guy who's probably lonely. He, he sees the opportunity here to um, do his part. And it, it was it was a little confusing, admittingly, admittedly. Okay. But, you know, that's that's OK, I guess. <laughs> No, I'm I'm so happy to hear you say this. I'm I think I'm going to help you connect some dots at Yoda. The holidays are all about sharing with family, meals, couches, stories, grandma's secret pecan pie recipe, and now you can also share a cart with Instacart's family carts. Everyone can add what they want to one group cart from wherever they are, so you don't have to go from room to room to find out who wants cranberry sauce or who should get mini marshmallows for the yams or collecting votes for sugar cookies versus shortbread. Just share a cart and then share the meals and the moments. Download the Instacart app and get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes. Plus, enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. Why get all your holiday decorations delivered through Instacart? Because maybe you only bought two wreaths, but you have 12 windows. Or maybe your toddler got very eager with the advent calendar. Or maybe the inflatable snowman didn't make it through the snowstorm. Or maybe the twinkle lights aren't twinkling. Whatever the reason, this season, Instacart's here for hosts and their whole holiday haul. Get decorations from the Home Depot, CVS, and more through Instacart and enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply is fully in uh, control of his faculties. He knows exactly who Luke Skywalker is. Uh, This is a test. Uh, And then he says, all of a sudden, when he hears the voice of Obi-Wan inside their hut, when he's eating his root leaf stew, yes, that is a trivia question. Um, (laughs) Okay. They, they, um, it's okay. Uh, Maybe you should trick Aloy so you can trick him, you can fool him on that. What, What does Yoda make for Luke and the Empire Strikes Back? Okay. Uh, um, yeah, got it. Uh, so he um, he says, you know, I cannot train him. The boy has no patience. And everyone says he will learn patience. And then Yoda reveals, you can tell his demeanor changes. And then we are flooded with these incredible, uh, memorable lines. Uh, the most famous being do or do not. There is no try. I actually wrote a, a piece years ago on stars.com about what uh to me what that means and i'd love to hear your thoughts too to me it, it doesn't mean don't do it it means he can sense that luke is a kid basically and he doesn't have his heart into it he's not going to give his best effort and yoda's saying don't waste my time or yours either do it and fully commit or don't bother you must give your all not you know don't try 
for Luke, trying is not actually giving your best effort, and he wants more from him. Well, and I think there are parallels, especially as a guy in his mid forties. You know, teaching your kid how to ride a bike, uh, maybe teaching your teenager how to drive. You're going to have to be patient. You're not going to get this right away. And I don't want to sound like my own version of a crusty old guy. You know, we eat. I think as each generation below the prior one starts coming up of and coming of age, we sit back and go, "Ah, these kids these days, they're not patient. They're they're not going to have." The, the the fortitude to actually see something through. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with your analysis. I also sat back and kind of appreciated that, you know, someone, and in this instance, Luke is going to have to realize what it takes to overcome this. And and so, you know, it's not just that the, the mentor and the mentee relationship, both of them really have to show their patience as they try to get done and get accomplished what should be something they both want. And so I have seen, I I think really as a parent, I saw that relationship start to nurture itself a little bit more throughout that scene. You see, I have never, truly never thought about it from that perspective of Yoda having to kind of acquire that patience to, wow, look at you, see? (laughs) Outstanding, outstanding. This is so good. I, I had truly hadn't thought of it in that perspective. We also meet uh, Lando Calrissian. Thoughts on Lando? Uh, shyster. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, 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 you know, you can be a good friend, but, and, and I get it. He was in a tough situation, right? But yeah, uh, everybody's got their prize. You know, I, I think really, uh, I, I, there, I don't think there was enough here from, and, and maybe, uh, you know, I'll have to admit this. I don't know what to expect next. And I know I'm that's glad. crazy, but, but, but I, I mean, I don't think there was fully... Uh, enough for me to I, I, I accurately judge him, but my first reaction was, well, um, he's going to do whatever keeps him safe and also maybe puts a space buck or two. There's your space ball reference because now I really watch more parallels grow here on, on how <laughs> Mel Brooks tried to lift this. But, um, you know, it, it really, I think there's more for me to learn about him, but overall, uh, he plays a good game uh, until the, you know, fire gets real hot. You know, for a good 40 years, whenever Billy D. Williams uh, would just be out and about, people would always come up to him and say, why did you betray Han Solo? They actually yep. came up to Billy D. Williams and constantly said that. And he was like, for, well, first of all, it was a part. It wasn't actually him. I was like, Darth Vader. Darth Vader is pretty hard to say no to. Uh, right. So you get that fantastic. Uh, the To me, the best scene, well, one of the two best scenes in the entire Star Wars uh, story the mythology of Star Wars is when Vader lures Luke into the carbon freeze chamber. And it's one of the few times in this film where there's no music and they're both standing on this gantry uh, and it's dark with that little red lighting. And all of a sudden uh, you hear Darth Vader's breathing. He says, the force is with you, young Skywalker. You are not a Jedi yet. And they look and they look at each other and it is Luke who ignites his lightsaber first uh, the fight begins, uh, gorgeous, but uh, another fascinating moment, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this is the cave. Luke is told by Yoda that place is strong with the dark side. Luke starts to bring in his weapons and Yoda encourages him not to do it. However, Luke goes in there and then he confronts Vader or some sort of version of Vader. What kind of, what did you, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I was confused, admittedly. I was very confused. I knew there were going to be temptations along the way. And at my first reaction, you mentioned this earlier, I thought this is some sort of weird test. Um, but at the same time, I, I maybe I didn't fully appreciate it. You know, I, I, I can't even begin to imagine how many times you've seen this movie. But uh, I, I really, yeah, I'm guessing. Um, but I, I, I thought maybe it was foreshadowing towards all right, there's going to have to be some confrontation with the dark side here coming. And I think maybe I misread it and thinking this was just yet another, you know, using my Star Trek language, this was the Kobayashi Maru of us mm-hmm. trying to uh, to learn how to te- to uh, subside those temptations and, and, and what the, well, renaissance, the dirtiness that comes with dealing with the dark side. Right. Um, it's... I'm a broken record, John, but I, I love it. The, that that scene uh, has been analyzed and discussed and broken down and, and 
and parsed countless times throughout popular culture in classrooms, uh, on podcasts. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's some interesting stuff there at the end. When I first saw it, I didn't realize who that was in the face. Uh, the mask explodes. My mom said to me, that's Luke. If he keeps uh, on the track and the trajectory that he is, he's going to end up like Darth Vader. And this was before, you know, we knew about the end of the film. Right. Uh, interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, at the end, there's the big confrontation. Luke actually loses his arm. Did, did you think, well, before we get to him, uh, we talked about Han Solo being frozen in carbonite. I think I told you on your show, Harrison originally had a contract for two films. So this was like a way to for George Lucas to create it so that Han Solo could die here or they could somehow figure out a way to get him out of the carbonite itself. Uh, what, did you find that sequence when he's frozen? Did you find that emotional in any way, shape or form or, or was it uh, compelling? What do you think? Yes, yeah, uh, you know, uh, compelling, uh, sad. I mean, again, I from the outset, I knew this. I had a feeling this movie was going to be dark and mm-hmm. yeah, and, and no pun intended. And I knew that had to happen. I again, I there are famous scenes that I'm of which I'm aware, but I don't know where they fall in the sequence of these three movies. And I saw the first one. OK, some things I now appreciate. All right. So this had to happen at some point. And so it was becoming clear that he was going to be set up and that this was something like that was likely going to happen. But I I see two things. I see, you know, Darth kind of lauding over, uh, reminding people who's actually in charge, right? You know, the Empire is in charge. And then also the love story, we talked about it earlier, the love Mm -hmm. story blossoming uh, with its own little, I'll say, sub current that, uh, and I mentioned it earlier, again, they, they, they were saying goodbye. And it's interesting, you know, with him only being written in for two and now knowing what, how that plays out. Uh, you're right. I suppose you see that for the first time and you're saying, wow, they could be saying goodbye forever. This was the shortest love, love story uh, that you may have ever seen. I mean, we're talking Romeo and Juliet at this <laughs> point, right? That, 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 you know, just as things were starting to materialize off he goes. The um, exactly. Uh, I, I don't think I've told you this. I, don't, I can't imagine I have. But when we were younger, uh, my brother is two and a half years younger than me. Every time we'd go back to see this movie in theaters, which was a lot because you, there was no streaming or DVDs or anything like that. Uh, he would always say to us, is this when they finally free Han Solo? And we'd always say, no, it's it's the same movie because he was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but even now today, and I've seen the movie over 100 times in my life. Easily. Easily. Wow. Yeah, I know. Um, my wife is a lucky lady. Um, <laughs> I, it still makes me sad. Yes. Even though I know it's going to happen because it's so beautifully done. Acted, performed, the music. Uh, as soon as that that smoke hits, the first thing you see is this, the dark visage of Vader's face, cold, emotionless. But it's not emotionless. So people, John... Have, there was a there was a popular criticism. Josh Whedon, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, the director of the first two Avengers films. Why get all your holiday decorations delivered through Instacart? Because maybe you only bought two wreaths, but you have 12 windows. Or maybe your toddler got very eager with the advent calendar. Or maybe the inflatable snowman didn't make it through the snowstorm. Or maybe the twinkle lights aren't twinkling. Whatever the reason, this season, Instacart's here for hosts and their whole holiday haul. Get decorations from The Home Depot, CVS, and more through Instacart and enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. The holidays are all about sharing with family. Meals, couches, stories, grandma's secret pecan pie recipe. And now you can also share a cart with Instacart's family carts. Everyone can add what they want to one group cart from wherever they are. So you don't have to go from room to room to find out who wants cranberry sauce or who should get mini marshmallows for the yams or collecting votes for sugar cookies versus shortbread. Just share a cart and then share the meals and the moments. Download the Instacart app and get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes. Plus, enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. He had said, I believe I have this right. He had said that The Empire Strikes Back uh, isn't a complete movie. It doesn't have an ending. How How do you respond to that? I'm not sure I agree with it. And again, now knowing what 
we all know, yeah, there was going to be some more to this. Little did we know how many additions and the backstories to come. But I, I think you could have ended it. I think you could have. I think this is, there are movies today where evil wins. And there are, there are instances where you put up a good fight. There's a bit of a love story, but sometimes the fight just isn't good enough. Now, I think you could also play that into is someone, you know, the person to whom you ask that question, are they an optimist or a pessimist? An mm-hmm. optimist would say, oh, there's going to be something. They're, this is all going to work out. May not be now. Or they may say, even if they don't make another movie, I know at some point that works itself out. You know, I, I'll say what I am. I am usually a pessimist, whether that's good or bad. That's just the, the reality. And so I thought, again, I know there's a third movie at this point with, with to watch, but I, I'm going, yeah, sometimes good doesn't prevail. And that is some of the harshest realities in life. And so had there not been another one, I think, yes, a lot of people would have been clamoring for more saying, wait a minute, th- this isn't how it should end, right? But sometimes it does. There are tragedies. There are plays that are tragedies. There are movies mm-hmm. that are tragedies. There are real life experiences that are tragedies. So I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that statement. I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I think um, it, there are there is a resolution. It may not be a satisfying resolution. Right. It, there it does. There aren't the good the good guys don't win. It tells you in the title. But this is a pretty bold revolutionary thing. And even today. The only other popular film I can think of that had, doesn't have a happy ending would be Infinity War, the Avengers Infinity War, um, which if you haven't seen that, that may not necessarily resonate with you. But it is a bold thing and it does make you think. But it also makes the the return, um, the resolution of this entire arc very satisfying. Uh, and we'll get to that at some point. But I've, I when you were talking to me, I had this epiphany and I, I'm going to, I have an, I have a proposal for you. I'm all ears. Okay. So we, of course we have star Wars came out in 77. We've got the empire strikes back in 80 return of the Jedi comes out in 1983. Uh, years later in 1999, we get episode one, the phantom menace episode two, attack of the clones 2002 and then 2005 revenge of the Sith. Uh, so that story arc is called in media res. It's a Latin term where, where you start in the middle of a story. Uh, you go back and explain how you get from point A to point D. Right. Uh, I'm going to challenge you to do the machete order. This is the machete order. You do episode four, which you've done. You did episode yeah. five, which you've done. Instead of going to six, I want you to watch episode one, then episode two, then episode three. And then Go to episode six. The reason why, psychologically, it's a much more mature story. You're obviously a mature uh, viewer and connoisseur of of entertainment and mythology. Um, And episodes one, two, and three are the backstory of Darth Vader as a child. And it shows how he goes from this innocent little boy to being the biggest evil in the galaxy. Because it makes what happens in episode six so much more powerful if you truly understand why Darth Vader is as tragic as he is. I'm not saying you have to, but I will tell you uh, because of this unique, fascinating situation where where you're not familiar with these stories, I think it's going to blow your mind. I think you're going to like it even more. I I appreciate the insight and I appreciate the challenge. Now the, the, the counter argument I have is all right, you watched it the other way and it Mm -hmm. didn't change your appreciation in any, in any shape or form. I, I have the luxury of maybe doing that, but at the same time, am I, am, is it going to almost, well, I, I guess that get, almost falls into your point though. I, am I going to have that backstory that explains a lot more, you know, and on a, on a, on that same parallel, but I, I'm intrigued. I, I'll give it some thought. I, I, I will not just poo poo that idea outright. But I think Return time, of the Jedi episode six will be infinitely more satisfying to you okay. because you get to see Anakin as a, as a 10 year old boy, you get to see him meet Obi-Wan Kenobi for the first time, you know, in the original film, uh, Darth Vader kills Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, when I met you, when I left you, I was, but the learner. Now I am the master. You're only a master of evil Darth and they fight 
you get to see that friendship build. You get to see the fall from grace. Uh, you get to see the the rise of the empire. Uh, it's it's. I'm so jealous right now. Boy, oh boy. If I had a DeLorean, after I, you know, I I bet on the Cubs win the World Series and stuff like that. This is what I would do. Well, well, let me ask you this: Why why didn't you guys recommend I do one, two, and three first? Uh, because I think episode four is the original. That's what Fair. caused set the world ablaze. This is where you truly have the, the settings of the story. It's a really episodes one, two, and three become a little more complicated in the myth. Okay. Episode four is a pure, beautiful story, uh, with three planets and, um, a good guy, a bad guy, um, and, and a princess you have to rescue. It's, it's a much, it's a, it's a great gateway. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> well, that's fair, and and I mean, if uh, heaven forbid, I've only I would have only gotten one opportunity to watch. What's the one you want to watch? You want to watch the original? Okay, that's absolutely, fair. That's fair. absolutely, because that's I fair. I think you would be more likely to like four than one the first time. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I will commit to this. I, you know, when you post this episode and uh, inevitably this draws some comments or <laughs> consternation from your loyal listeners and also our Hyperion Hub listeners who we appreciate so much. Yes. Uh, this, the, you know, I'll kind of see what other people think. And and if the general sentiment is my, my guru here is absolutely right and one, two and three needs to be uh, on the agenda before six, I'm all ears. All right, and we can certainly ask Beavis and Butt. I mean, John and Sean, uh, <laughs> see what they think. Uh, I but- will tell you what John says. He is go in order, do not deviate. And and again, I I had not thought of it in the way and, and until you explained it to me tonight. Yeah, it, and the reason is there, there's something in six that is sort of a revolution uh, of character stuff, and it's cool. But the way it's revealed in three is so much better and so much more authentic to i think the story and i well i can't say much i don't want to i don't want to give away we'll, we'll, we'll let well, you we'll, we'll, we'll let you marinate well but at the same time does that blow your mind that i have no idea what you're talking about no it makes me very happy <laughs> okay <laughs> oh i'm telling you i i cannot one of my favorite things about it i think this is part of my extrovert i think i'm definitely an omnivert i'm i can flex either direction but sure. the extrovert of me likes uh, the social experience of this and you uh, listen to this with all of our listeners boy oh boy yeah let we'll do a poll we're gonna okay. post this we're gonna do a poll uh should john do the machete order or should he just continue with the original trilogy first i love it well john uh what a blessing what a what a pleasure what a delight to speak with you whether it is on coffee with Kenobi or on the wonderful hyperion hub uh please let us know what's going on over at the hub and where they can find you in the show Yeah, we're all over social media. John even just started a TikTok. So all you have to do is search for Hyperion Hub. You're going to find us, and you certainly can find us wherever you get your podcasts. I'm very fortunate that John and Sean, uh, many moons ago now, uh, almost five, said, you know what? You guys all love Disney. Let's try to do something together. And because of that, uh, you know, I've gotten to know people like yourself and so many folks throughout Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, the the various universes, and and will always be thankful and and blessed myself that... uh, because of that, in some way, shape, or form, this guy finally sat down and started watching Star Wars movies so he can really fully appreciate a lot more in pop culture. Just like when I finally decided to watch The Office, boy, a lot more references really make some sense when I sit down and, and pay attention to what's going around around me. Well, <laughs> well, John, the force is indeed strong with you. Thank you so much, uh, my friend, for coming back on the show. Look forward to having you on in the future. And Who knows what we will talk about, but I look forward to it no matter what it is. Well, thank you so much, Dan, and I appreciate you. As I said at the outset, the fact that you're patient and and want to watch me kind of learn, even though I clearly struggle and am not quite fully appreciative of what this all will entail. This is quite a journey. It is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And so I'll I'll get recharged, re-energized, and and we'll keep on chugging. Eh? What I tell you, what an amazing story that John has. I am so envious, and probably you are too, to hear this individual, this gentleman, get to experience the Empire Strikes Back for the first time. I can't even talk. I'm so excited. 
because he has no preconceived notions, nothing to draw from in the fandom. He's just seeing it with fresh eyes, and that is such a marvelous thing. So very grateful to share it with you. I want to thank all of you for joining me on Coffee with Kenobi every week. The website is coffeewithkenobi.com for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, videos, and more. The official travel partner of Coffee with Kenobi is MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel for your no-cost, no-obligation quote to any of the Disney theme parks or anywhere else you want to go on vacation. Plus, it's a great way to support me and Coffee with Kenobi. If you want to talk Star Wars in a family-friendly, spoiler and drama-free place online, go to the Facebook group, which is coffeewithkenobi.com slash community, and sign up to become a part of the CWK Cafe. You're really not signing up. I don't know why I said that. It's a Facebook group. Jump on there and share your Star Wars opinions. It's a, it's a blast. Thanks to the members of the CWK Alliance, this podcast, the website, event coverage, and more has come to life. But now you can help join the show and support us for as little as $1 a month by joining the CWK Alliance, which is the Patreon page for Coffee with Kenobi. When you join the Alliance, you get access to CWK Prover, an exclusive weekly audio and video podcast not available anywhere else. Find out more at coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance. And 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. You can email me, danzy at coffeewithkenobi.com. You can find Coffee with Kenobi on social media, X, Instagram, Threads, Pinterest, and TikTok. Please give the show a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeewithkenobi or subscribe to Coffee with Kenobi's YouTube channel. Please take a couple of minutes to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you want to get a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, or a coffee mug, with the Coffee with Kenobi logo, go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash shop. Thank you, as always, for joining me for a virtual cup of coffee. I appreciate your time and look forward to the next opportunity to talk stars with you. I'm Dan Zay, reminding you that this is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. Why get all your holiday decorations delivered through Instacart? Because maybe you only bought two wreaths, but you have 12 windows. Or maybe your toddler got very eager with the advent calendar. Or maybe the inflatable snowman didn't make it through the snowstorm. Or maybe the twinkle lights aren't twinkling. Whatever the reason, this season, Instacart's here for hosts and their whole holiday haul. Get decorations from the Home Depot, CVS, and more through Instacart and enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply. The holidays are all about sharing with family. Meals, couches, stories, grandma's secret pecan pie recipe. And now you can also share a cart with Instacart's family carts. Everyone can add what they want to one group cart from wherever they are. So you don't have to go from room to room to find out who wants cranberry sauce or who should get many marshmallows for the yams or collecting votes for sugar cookies versus shortbread. Just share a cart and then share the meals and the moments. Download the Instacart app and get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes. Plus enjoy free delivery on your first three orders. Service fees and terms apply.